Welcome to WHBC TV. I'm Dr. Tadeva Boyd, the lead pastor of Wellman Heights. This morning I greet you with Christ's joy. Everywhere I'm around, everywhere I see all around me, God is all around. That's what we are celebrating this morning. I greet you with Christ's joy and I welcome you to this broadcast as we continue in our message series, Miracles. People who met Jesus. And this morning we're going to be talking about the woman who met Jesus. And that woman is a woman who wanted it bad. Why don't you get a pen and a paper, get your Bible, and let's go into the Word of God to Matthew chapter 15, beginning from verse 21 to 28. And we're going to see the faith of this woman, how great and how big her faith is that really caught Jesus' attention. And then I'll come back and pray with you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Before you take your seat, I've titled the message to you this morning. I've titled the message to you this morning. Quick, put it up quickly. The woman who wanted it bad. Life is full of interruptions. Think back for a moment. And see if this has ever happened to you. You've had a hard day. You've had a hard day. And finally you, you have a few minutes of a me time. Ladies, you love this. Ladies, you love this. You prepared yourself a hot bath. Throw in some few bubbles just for a touch of luxury. And you slowly slide in it. And just as you settle in, you heard the scream. Mommy, 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 mommy. Naomi just hit me. An interruption. Oh, has this ever happened to you? You're getting the evening dinner ready. The doorbell rings. The whole place is steaming up because of the cooking in the kitchen. And the whole place is in a mess because the kids have just messed up everything. And you run to the door wondering who your evening caller might be. You open the door and standing there are two smiling Jehovah Witnesses. An interruption. It, it reminds me of the story of uh, a little old lady. Mom, you love this. It reminds me of a story of a, a little old lady who answered a knock on her door one morning only to be confronted by a well-dressed young man like myself carrying a, a vacuum cleaner. And, and, and he said, good morning, ma'am. And the young man said, good morning, ma'am. If I could take a couple of your minutes, I would like to demonstrate the very latest in high-powered vacuum cleaner for you. Go away! She sneered. Go away! Go away! I don't have money. And just as she proceeded to close her door, the young man quickly put his foot and edged it to the door. And he said, no, 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 ma'am, ma'am. Not until you hear and you see what this baby, this bad boy can do. And with that, he emptied. Tell the person to call later. And with that, he emptied a bucket of horse, horse manure onto a hallway floor carpet. And then he said, if this vacuum cleaner does not remove all traces of this horse manure from your carpet, ma'am, I will personally eat the remainder. <laughs> the old lady stepped back and said, well, I hope you've got a darn good appetite because my electricity was cut this morning. 
interruptions. <laughs> Our lives are filled with interruptions. We we'll all have to deal with them every day. Some are natural. Some are supernatural. Some are small. Some are big. Some are not sudden. Some are so sudden. Some are nastier. And some are deadlier. This woman in our text this morning, her life was interrupted by the serious sickness in her daughter's life. And here she is in turn interrupting Jesus' little brief vacation with her request saying, Lord, have mercy on me, son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. Good God of heaven. Has life ever had you interrupted that you have nowhere to run to but to Jesus? Here's your darling little girl. You could still remember our first day of kindergarten. You could still remember that pretty little dress she wore to, to school. She wasn't sick like this before. Maybe, maybe uh, every now and then she has a little flu and a slight of, uh, of, of migraine headaches. But not like this! Grievously vexed! With the devil. Nothing like the devil she's fighting now. You had hopes for her graduating college at the top of her class one day. Like any parents, you had hopes for her one day getting married and having children of her own. But now, verse 22 says, she's grievously vexed with the devil. Meaning she was full, full of a devil. Demon possessed. Dicky Neal, it's bad. All I can think of is one of them exorcist movies where a little girl is possessed and her hair starts spinning around 360 degrees. And she starts talking in strange, with strange voices. My precious. <laughs> can, can you imagine the feeling of this mother? Her heart, her helplessness. We're not even told if she had a husband. So she's probably the only one caring for this child. And you know a mama would do anything for a baby, don't you? I'm not even a mama. I know how much I love my only daughter. I'll do anything to protect her. I, I, I told Naomi that if some guy came <laughs> and ever tries, ever try hard to get a phone number, ever try hard to get a phone number, I told her to go ahead and give it to him. But give him my phone number. <laughs> give him my phone number. Oh, you want to talk to Naomi, eh? Uh, uh, okay. Talk to me first. I'm Naomi's daddy. 
my Nigerian accent. I'm Naomi's daddy. But that's nothing like a mother's love for a child. A mother is like a mama bear. <laughs> you better not come near a cub, right, ladies? My wife is the sweetest, classiest lady I know. I mean, when my wife goes, gets up at 3 o'clock in the morning to go to the bathroom, she's like this. <laughs> Me, <laughs> I get up, I'm like this. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on. I have seldom, in our 25 year plus of marriage, I have seldom seen her raise her voice. Oh, I raised mine. <laughs> this morning I was raising mine. <laughs> I mean, she is a gentle, she's as gentle as a lamb. But Lord, don't let that gentle looks fool you. <laughs> There's a lion. There's a lion in there somewhere. There's a lion in there somewhere waiting to. She won't fight you. But the only time that, that, that ignites the fire in her is when you mess up with, with one of her kids. Something she loves. And you see the mama bear comes up. She, 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 will, she will turn into a sumo wrestler. <laughs> Kung Fu. <laughs> she, she will turn into a Kung Fu fighter. Don't mess. I, I mean, a mama will fight for a child like no one else would. Can I get a witness? Someone in here knows what it's like when you're losing your little girl. Losing your little boy. Losing a husband or a wife, it's a helpless feeling. But you fight! You fight, you do whatever it takes. You, 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 you cross the hardest desert. You travel near or far just to see Jesus. Come on, somebody help me preach this message this morning. What are you willing to fight for? Would you fight the devil for your daughter? Would you fight the devil for your son? W would you fight the devil for your husband, for your wife? W would you fight the devil for your pastor? Oh, some of you are still saying yes. <laughs> t tell your neighbor, excuse me, I've got, a, I've got a devil to fight. Excuse me, I've got a devil to fight. What anything would you do as you sang this morning? I'll do anything just to see you. What anything would you do just to see his glory? Or oh, you were just singing that song. Our text says in verse 22, Jonathan, that this woman had the devil to fight for a daughter. And she came across the coast of Tyre and Sidon. This place alone, this place alone, Tyre and Sidon, that she came from, carries a load of meanings. I looked it up. Tyre and Sidon. Ah. Tyre means a rock. Hmm. And guess what Sidon means? Sidon means hard. 
Somebody missed that. Somebody missed that. Somebody missed that. Have you ever been caught between a rock and a hard place? If you are, then you're from Tyre and Sidon. Have you ever had a problem so big that it interrupted your life? She, a Canaanite woman, a Syrophoenician woman, came running across the coast. She came through the towns, over the hills, and down the ridges just to see Jesus because a daughter, maybe her only daughter, was full of the devil. We don't know how many miles she had to travel just to get to Jesus. We just know the text says she came out. Give me verse 21 again. She came out from the region. She came out from the region because she was desperate. She was desperate. I've heard people say to me, Dr. Tai, I'll come to your church, but it's too far. <laughs> oh, oh, I'll come to your church, but, 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 but parking is terrible in your church. And I'm thinking, you're not desperate enough. Because when you really want something from the Lord... When you really have a devil, you're fighting in your house. <laughs> when you, you, you would walk wherever you have to walk. You will do whatever you have to do. You will move whatever mountains you have to move. You will change whatever schedule you have to change. Just so you get your breakthrough. Come on, somebody. Don't tell me you leave your house in Ajax to go watch the Toronto Raptors at the ACC play against the Knicks, New York Knickerbockers. And you can't come to church? You can't come to church to get a touch from God for your child? Oh, you're, you're, you're really not in trouble. Because when you are in trouble, <laughs> Lord help me preach this message like I feel it. Where, where's my piano guy? Adam, go on there. Go on. You, you're really not in trouble. See, 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 see. And the text says, one day, this woman heard that Jesus was in town. After she spent all her money on doctors, and after all the visits, to the exorcist in town. She heard of an old, old story. Oh, I did my study. She heard of an old, old story from the madman who became a missionary. You know where he came from? Same region. She heard of an old, old story of a savior who came from glory. She heard about his healing, of his cleansing power, revealing how he made the lame to walk and caused the blind to see. And then she cried, Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. And somehow Jesus came. But wait, wait a minute. But just before we go deep into this text, what really got my attention, Bikin Kuma, as I was studying, this woman's encounter with Jesus was the statement that Jesus made in verse 28. 
Put verse 28 up. Jesus said to the woman, Oh woman, your faith, your faith is great. Great means mega. Everybody say mega. It's a Greek word, mega. Uh, that's where we got the, 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 the English word that we use too. Mega. But what I want to know is, Madam Sashi, what was so mega about this woman's faith that caught Jesus' attention? Skip the middle. Go to the end. She said, your faith is great. Then for you to understand what, why Jesus was take, would just even say, your, woman, your faith is great. You have to go back into the text to find out what is it so great about this woman's faith. Jesus has only said, your faith is great to only two people in the scripture. In the New Testament, only two people. Only two people. Only two people. He never said your faith is great to his disciples. Even his disciples. You remember on one occasion what he says to his disciples? O ye of little. But only to two people in all of New Testament. He said it to this woman. And he said it to the centurion. Ask your neighbor. Do you have a little faith? Or a great faith. Don't tell them to mind their own business now. Because the question this morning is, friends, you're doing well, put the life point up. The question this morning is, how bad do you really want it? That, that's the question this morning. How bad do you really want it? How bad do you want whatever your it is? What, what, what was it? What was it about this woman that got Jesus' attention and his commendation? For the remainder of our time, let me quickly share with you the two obstacles this woman had to overcome in order for our faith to be considered great. She had to overcome two obstacles in this text in order for our faith to be considered great. And how you handle these two obstacles too, because these two obstacles come to all of us. The interruptions of life, they come to us. How you deal and handle these two obstacles will really determine how bad you want to get your miracle from Jesus too. You can't just tell me, I want it bad. It's going to be contingent on how you handle these two obstacles. Are you ready to receive church? Number one, you need to overcome silent treatment. Ooh, that's good. <laughs> You need to overcome silent treatment. Tell your number, overcome silent treatment. Verse 23 says, when she finally came to Jesus, this woman, Dickie Neal, crossed. She came across the coast. Walked through towns. Over the hills. Down the ridges. When she finally came to Jesus, she cried out, Lord, have mercy on me! For my daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. And verse 23 said, Jesus did not say a word. 
Jesus said nothing. Jesus gave her a silent treatment. You mean the loving Jesus? The healing Jesus? The delivering Jesus? The water walking Jesus? The storm stealer Jesus? The dead raising Jesus that we saw last week? Gave this needy woman a cold shoulder? A silent treatment? She cried out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. I'm not saying I'm worthy. I'm not saying I'm deserving. I'm not even saying I've been living right. I'm not even trying to be important in front of your disciples. But I'm a desperate woman. I'm desperate for mercy. Anybody in here desperate for the Lord's mercy this morning? See, this woman came to my loving Jesus. My caring Jesus. Who we met last week. And we came to understand that he's a God of compassion. When he had compassion on that widow of name. You all remember last week? The text says she came to the same Jesus. I don't know what you do with your text. When I read something last week, I don't just forget it and leave it there. I go, oh, I, oh, something is different. This is not the same Jesus that I saw last week that was moved with compassion. And now this Jesus, the same Jesus, this is what he said. See, silence can be deafening, isn't it? Some of you are already fidgeting. <laughs> you can, where's this going, Pastor? He answered her not a word. The word has no word. The physician has no cure. <laughs> the fountain has no spring. Does he even care at all? I, I, I will tell you I'm a pastor. I'm a pastor. Even when I don't feel like talking to you, and I don't want to talk to you, I still have to pretend I'm listening to you. <laughs> and I'm smiling and I'm nodding my head like I'm listening to you. Like I'm really listening to you. <laughs> God forgive me. I'm just being honest with you. God forgive me. And God, God forbid if I should ever give you a silent treatment. Can you imagine what your friend will say? I met your pastor at the taste of Lawrence. And that your pastor is not nice at all. He gave me a silent, he was just looking at me like I... She was crying out to Jesus and Jesus didn't say a thing. See, see. Go, give, me, give me, see, see, see that again? Because she keeps what? She keeps what? Come on, help me. She keeps what? That's a participle in the, in the, in the Greek text. She keeps on shouting. Keep on shouting, keep on shouting, keep on shouting, keep on shouting. And Jesus didn't say a word. You thought he was shouting only once? Lord, help me. Have mercy on me. And then Jesus was silent, and then she was waiting to hear what Jesus was saying, and then she's silent too. You know that game we used to play when, when, when we were taking the kids away on holiday, and we say, let's see who's going to 
Talk first. <laughs> and we'll all be silent. I love playing that. That's when I'm really getting like, can somebody shut up? No, let's play a game. Let's see who's going to talk first. <laughs> you, you, you think that's what Jesus... She kept on shouting. She kept on shouting. She kept on shouting. And Jesus didn't say anything. The word didn't have a word. Ha! Has God ever gone silent on you? I'm, I'm talking about times. I'm talking about times when it seems like God is hiding, is hiding from you, is missing in action, and it can be found. Some of you are shaking. You already know where I'm going. A, a, a single mother, a single mother had two sons. Uh, 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 they were constantly, constantly causing her nothing but grief. They were so bad that one day she took them to the, a pastor. And she said, Pastor, beat him up. And he knew he couldn't do that. So, so he called one of the boys. He called one of the boys and, 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 and took him into his office. The other was waiting in the reception area. And he sat the boy down in his office and leered over his glasses and, 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 and said to the boy, Where's God? And the boy said nothing. He asked again in a strong tone, Where's God? Still, the boy sat there and said nothing. Finally, the, the pastor stood up behind his desk, took his glasses off, and leaned over the desk. And with the, the sternest voice you've ever heard, Where is God? This time the boy ran out of the office. He grabbed, he grabbed his little brother and he just ran out of the church. Ran out of the church. As they were running out, the little brother said, slow, slow down, slow down. Uh, still panicking, he said, he said, what happened in that office? Uh, and the brother, the brother still panting replied, I, I, don't, I don't know, I, know, I don't know. But somebody stole God and, and they think we did it. <laughs> now I'm talking about times when God can be found in your situation and he's been stole away he seems so far away and silent oh you're praying I see you come to break to prayer concert but heaven seems like a brass. Oh, you're believing, but you feel like you're not trying enough. Maybe if I sowed more, maybe if I go to church more, maybe if I serve God more, maybe he would answer me. Does anybody in here know what I'm talking about? Have you ever been given a silent treatment? <laughs> don't look <laughs> don't look or maybe you're the one who's giving somebody a silent treatment I won't even ask you to show your hands just look at me if you know what I'm talking about maybe you've never met and you've never felt like this woman just ask Job about the silent treatment he got from God. Ah. He lost all his children in one day. House gone. Cattle's gone. Money gone. And he cried out to God like this woman. And God was silent for a whole 38 chapters 
Go read from Job chapter 1 to Job chapter 38. Job was asking God, show up. God, talk to me. For a whole 38 chapter, Auntie Mabel, God was silent on Job. What do you do when God doesn't respond? Tell your neighbor, keep pushing. T tell your neighbor, just keep pushing. Just keep asking. <laughs> just keep knocking. <laughs> just keep seeking. <laughs> just keep praying. <laughs> just keep praying. Oh. You, you all know what push means, does, don't you? Give me the lifeline. You're doing well. Give me the lifeline. You know what push means, don't you? Push means pray until something <laughs> happens oh this woman was not about to take a no for an answer from god she wasn't about to take a no for an answer ah, see see the problem with most of us is when we pray and we don't see what we're praying for we take it to mean that god is saying no we take it to mean god is saying no to us but since when does silence, when does the silence mean a no to God? Because the truth of the matter is, sometimes God may say yes, sometimes God may say no, and sometimes God might say, wait. But a wait is never a no in his vocabulary. Hello, somebody. So when you don't hear a no, or you don't hear a yes, what you want to do is keep crying out, keep pushing her, keep praying her until something happens. Who is this message encouraging this morning? Oh, oh I, I came to build somebody's faith up this morning so that when you are all done Jesus can say to you great is your faith not little not puny the text says in verse 23 that even the disciples even his disciples ask Jesus to tell her to shut up Shut up! She's shouting after us. Tell him to tell her to shut up. Come on now. But this woman won't shut up. That shows you how relentless this woman really was and how bad she really wanted it. Because if you really want your miracle bad, no Eclas can stop you. If you really want your miracle so bad, no haters can stop you. I say, if you really want your miracle so bad, no silent treatment can stop you. Because you have set your face like a flint and you've come to see only Jesus and not that person. You haven't come to church to see that person sitting next to you. You haven't come to church to see that person sitting next to you who feels irritated by your shouting. Oh, you're not hearing me. I'm convinced that the reason why many of us don't see our miracles is because we come to church looking cute. You don't want to raise your hands. We're singing song about clap your hands. You don't want to clap your hands. You don't want to cry out to Jesus. You don't want to say amen because you are afraid of what the person next to you might be thinking. Oh, you don't have a devil to fight. Because if you have a devil to fight, uh, you won't be care about any protocol or who calls. Uh, because, oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. If your daughter, if your daughter or your son or your husband or your wife is grievously vexed with the devil, you won't be acting cutesy. 
They're asking this woman to be acting cutesy. You don't know the devil she fights every night. Every night she can't sleep because that girl is, is just going off the wall. And she doesn't know if she's going to cut herself or she's going to be found in the morning dead. And you're telling her to look cute. The devil is a liar. Watch this. I, 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 you said for me to take you deeper. This is our year of going deeper in the word of God. You will read this text and you never read it like you've read it again. You're going to read it with a new perspective. Because if your daughter is grievously vexed with the devil, you will jump through folks just to get to Jesus. You would walk through hell and high waters if you have to go through it. Because you know if Jesus can do it, then no one else can do it. Who is this message here for this morning? Tell your neighbor one more time. Don't let silence stop you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, I wish I had time. I wish I had time. But, but because, because I want us to go to the taste of Lawrence. But I got to give you my second point. I got to give my second point. And here's the second obstacle. Maybe I should wait till next week to give you a second point. Oh, yeah. eh? should, should we wait? Add part two? You want it now? It's already cooked. You don't want a, you don't want a stale bread? You, you want a fresh, you don't want a day old bread, a one week old bread? You want fresh stale bread? Okay, let me give you my second point, Mr. Bolland. And here's the second obstacle this woman had to overcome. And that you have to overcome too. For Jesus to be able to call your faith great. Mega. Number two. You need to overcome standing insult. Ah, ah, somebody got it right there. When Jesus finally said something to this woman, did you hear what our Lord called her? <laughs> Look at verse 26 with me. Look at verse 26. And he answered her and said, it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the and throw it to the the Lord called her a dog oh I know it's a slang these days hey your dog hey dog <laughs> no 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 back in Jesus days you don't want to be called a dog man you don't want to be called a dog the Lord called her a dog Ouch! Tell your neighbor, ouch. <laughs> sister Rookie, her sister came for a little help. And he calls her dog. All she needed for her daughter was a miracle. And all she gets is a name calling. I thought that would have done it. You got given a silent treatment once, and now you're being called a name? Sister Isley, I thought that would have done it. No, no, no. I'm helping you to see why Jesus is calling this woman a great woman faith. I thought that would have done it. She could have said, hmm, that's it, hmm. Blankety blank, you, I'm leaving this church. Yeah. But this crazy woman, this relentless woman, This radical woman 
This never give up woman. This never die woman. We stood insult. Oh, oh, I wish I had me some crazy women in this house right now. I said, I wish I had me some crazy women right now. I know what some of you will do. I've been with, I've been your pastor for 12 years. I know what some of you will do. Some of you will be giving Jesus some attitude. Who, who, who in the world does he think he is? Does he think the Jews are better than, the, than us Gentiles? I'm going to sue him. I'm going to sue him for verbal abuse. But let me ask you, if this desperate mother had walked out on Jesus, where else would she have gone? She, thank you, Sister Jilala. She's tried everything else. This was her last stop. Where would she have gone? You do not want to go away also, do you? What did you say, Peter? What did you say, Peter? In, in John chapter 6, verse 68. What did you say, Peter? Lord! To whom shall we go? You only, you only, you only have the words of eternal life. We've tried everything else and it's failed us. America is trying everything right now and it's failing them. But it's time for America to turn to God because he said, where my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, then I will hear from heaven and I will heal their land. I lost my watch. I would heal their land. Lord, if you don't help my daughter, no one else can. Lord, if you don't touch my son, no one else can. Lord, if you don't save my husband, no one else. Lord, if you don't deliver my wife, no one else can. You only, you only, you only have the words of eternal life. Oh, I better quit this message. I feel something moving me this morning. Oh, oh, I love, I love this woman's response. I love this woman's response to Jesus. Tell two people next to you and say, a juicy one is coming, a juicy one is coming, a juicy one is coming. Look at verse 27. Oh, this is good. Verse 27, put it up. But! Oh, that's a good but. <laughs> but! She said, Jesus said, it is not meat, it is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. This is our response. Oh, but! She said, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I'm cool with that. You can call me a dog. I'm okay with being called a dog. Yes, Lord. But even the dogs feed on the crumbs which falls down from their master's table. This woman will not take a no for an answer. Aren't you already liking her? That's my kind of a woman. <laughs> she said to Jesus, I may be a dog, but all I need is a crumb. I'm not asking for a loaf, but a little crumb will do 
a dog like me, Jesus. A little crumb. Somebody say, all I need is a little crumb. See, see, sometimes it's good to be a dog. Dick in Bosley, sometimes it's good to be a dog, especially in North America. No, no, no. I'm not talking about dog back home in Haiti or back in Africa or, or, or back in Sri Lanka or back in the Philippines or back in the West Islands. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about those dogs. See, 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 see. Dogs here in North America get preferential, preferential treatment. <laughs> mm, come on, somebody. A dog here gets to sleep on your bed. They are in your house and a part of your family. And some dogs, when it's all said and done, they may even take on your last name. You don't believe me? Go to veteran, store, veteran clinic. What they register dog, that dog's name in. <laughs> when you eat they, they even get on your table and they start their little routine you know they do to get your attention they start with can I get a witness <laughs> but here's a part of this message that most people don't understand unless you know your Greek language which is the original language the New Testament was written. What Jesus called the woman in verse 26 has confused a lot of folks. I did a study. There are two different words in the New Testament for dogs. Two different words. You read it in English and you think a dog is a dog. Huh. No, not so in Greek. In Greek, one word, the computer, that is used for dog is the word kuon. Everybody say kuon. Kuon is the word used to refer to stray, wild street dogs that are scavengers. Those are the types of dogs we have in Africa and the islands and, and in the Philippines and the Asia. They're kuons. So what you got back home is kuon. Because those kuons, then it's those kuons. They don't jump on your bed. <laughs> Lord, have mercy on Ringo. <laughs> I, I had a dog called Ringo. <laughs> Lord, have mercy on Ringo. <laughs> or, or that dog, if he even comes in the house. Am I right? T -t -talk, less of, talk less of coming into your bed. <laughs> and then jumping on your dinner table and wagging, you know. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> No, 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 no. Why? Why? Because those dogs, cool ones, stay outside. Kuon is the word that Jews, that Je Jews, yeah, the Jews use to describe the Gentiles. They call them kuons, dogs. But the word, oh, I told you a juicy one is coming. I told you a juicy one is coming. But the word that Jesus used here is not cool on street dogs, but is the word kunarion. Ever say kunarion. Kunarion is the word that is used for a house dog, a puppy, a house pet, a lap dog. Oh, you're not hearing me. Oh, oh. We know who let the dogs out. Who let the dogs out? Who? 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 Maybe I should bring my, uh, what's his name? Bahaman. Maybe I should bring Bahaman here to sing it for you. Who let the dogs out? Who? But what I want to ask you this morning is, who let the dogs in?
I said, who let the dogs into the house? Somebody holler, Jesus! You know how I know it's Jesus who let the dogs in? Sister Marie, the answer is right here in our text. Go back to verse 21 with me. Okay. Verse 21. Verse 21 says, it says, And Jesus went away from there, from Galilee, the land of the Gentiles, and the land of the Jews, and he withdrew into the district of Tyre and Sidon, the district of the Gentiles. What is Jesus doing in this region? What is he doing there if he's not intended to meet this woman's need? Why was he in a Gentile district of Tyre and Sidon? I'll tell you why. I don't think Jesus was simply here to get a little R and R, as some supposed. And yes, it's true that in verse 24, that he has been sent to the only, to only the lost, we read it, is, is Jesus said, I've been sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But this Gentile woman also knows our Bible well enough too that God's promise to Abraham in Genesis chapter 12 verse 3 says, and in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. And Jesus also said elsewhere in John chapter 10 verse 16 that he has other sheep which are not of this fold meaning they are not Jews but I must bring them I must bring them Oh, maybe I've been preaching to myself this morning. But if you are thankful that Jesus let you into his house, regardless of who you are and where you are from, just go ahead and give him your 30-second praise. Give him your 30-second praise. Give him praise for letting you in. Letting you in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for letting me in. Thank you for letting me in, the sinner me, the dog me, the unholy me, the unrighteous me, the violent offender me. Don't you thank the Lord that when it comes to the color of your skin, the color of your skin don't matter. But black lives matter. Oh, I said, but black lives matter. Just as white lives matter. And brown and blue lives matter too. Church, am I preaching the gospel truth here this morning? Put the lifeline on. Put the lifeline on. Turn to somebody you haven't talked to yet. And tell them the pastor says, all lives matters. All lives matters. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him shall not perish. But we what? So I said to somebody here this morning as I close, when it comes to Jesus, the color of your skin is inconsequential. <laughs> When it comes to my Jesus, where you're born is irrelevant. When it comes to my Jesus, what your pedigree is, is incognito. What matters most is, how bad do you want him? And if you came empty this morning, you came empty this morning, but with a heart open, I declare unto you that you will live here with a heart filled and a praising spirit 
in Jesus' name. Somebody shout amen. amen. I'm almost done. I just need a few more minutes, two, three more minutes. So this Syrophoenician woman with her understanding, I'm trying to help you understand why Jesus looked at her and said, woman, thy faith is great. Despite all the obstacles she had to go through, Jesus saw something so attractive about this woman. So this Syrophoenician woman with her unrelenting doggy dog determination says to Jesus in verse 27. Look at it. Verse 27. Yes, Lord. I agree you call me a pet dog. See that? Jesus didn't call her Kuon. He said, I agree you call me a pet dog. I agree you call me a lap dog. That's fine with me. Akuna Matata, which means no worries. But even a house dog has got a master. And if you call me your house dog, then you must be my master. Ah, oh, somebody didn't get that. Somebody didn't get that. Oh, just one. And even a house dog has got a master, and they feed on crumbs that falls from the master's table. They feed on crumbs that falls from the master's table. I like this woman already. She's as sharp as a razor blade. She won't let Jesus have the hook easy. She understood that all a lap dog needs to do is to sit on a master's lap. All a lap dog needs to do is to sit on a master's lap. I know I'm heavy. Mm -hmm. And all that dog needs to do is just position himself with his mouth wide open. And he knows that soon and very soon a crumb a crumb Oh, you're not hearing me this morning. I, 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 I don't know what it is, but I feel blessing coming down right now. Somebody ought to open your mouth. You ought to open your mouth and begin to praise Him. And begin to praise Him. Like you see the blessing coming down. Hallelujah. Begin to praise Him. Because you know that when praises goes up, give me this. Give me this, he's sleeping. You know when praises goes up. I said you know when praises goes up. I said you know when praises goes up. All our microphones are busted in this house. I said when you know that praises goes up. What comes down? What comes down? Yes, Lord. My mouth is open, Lord. I will praise you, Lord. I will exalt you, Lord. I will lift you up, Lord. I will extol you, Lord. I will honor you, Lord. My mouth is open. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And I don't know who this message is for. Everybody stand up on your feet. Worship team. All around. All around. Everywhere I look. God's love is all around. Amen. I hope that message was a blessing to you. The woman who wanted it bad. And we looked at the two obstacles. That this woman had to face. That this woman had to overcome. In order to receive a miracle. And the first is she overcomes silent treatment. And then the second is she withstood insult. And I don't know what is gravely, grievously vexing you this morning. But whatever your situation is, you too can be an overcomer. As she did, you have to overcome silent treatment. 
and then you have to overcome with standing insult whatever it takes for you to receive that miracle this morning and this afternoon or this evening wherever you're listening to this broadcast Jesus wants to do it for you it's still in the miracle business and what a powerful word we heard this morning as several people came to give a situation to the Lord and whatever your situation is this morning I'm going to challenge you to come and bring it to the Lord and he will take care of it for you let me pray with you right now father in the mighty name of Jesus I pray for that man I pray for that woman for that young man and your, that young woman today we need your touch father whatever is grievously vexing them that in the mighty name of Jesus you will take care of their situation that you will do miracles so great and father they will give you the glory in Jesus mighty name we pray amen if you receive that why don't you comment at the bottom of your screen let me know how much this message was a blessing to you and then I would like to rejoice with you and pray with you even further or better still why don't you come and visit us here at Wilmer Heights Baptist Church we're on 1687 Victoria Park south of Lawrence and we'll give you the best seat in the house God bless you we love you and we look forward to seeing you again same time same station in Jesus mighty name Amen.